Hello and welcome back to the Imperial College London live stream at the Great Exhibition Road Festival. Sorry, our connection just cut out, but we are back with you and now here in the robotic zone. So behind me, you can see the main entrance of Imperial College filled with stands and exhibitors. And you can learn all about the innovative robotic research that is taking place at Imperial. If you want to come along, you will be able to do things like wear or see a virtual reality headset that will put you in the shoes of an author orthopedic surgeon or you can wear an exoskeleton and control a robot so at the moment uh, I'm going to take you over to talk to Peter from Imperial College um, who is just this very moment taking a picture hello <laughs> we've come back to find you um, so would you be able to introduce yourself and then tell us a little bit about some of the amazing things which I can see behind you of course yes um, I'm Petr Kurmushev I'm a lecturer in the Dyson School of Design Engineering and we have here a selection of our best robot demos. Um, so I hope you can see behind me our biggest robot, which is Robot De Niro. I hope some people are already familiar with it from, from previous years. So what we are showing this time is a, a way to teach the robot new skills using an exoskeleton. So you have a person wearing the exoskeleton uh, who is uh, demonstrating to the robot how to do different things with the bricks. So for example, uh, stack the bricks together to build a tower or pass the bricks to the people and then uh, have them uh, return back. Yeah, of course. Can you see from here? So on your left side, you have uh, the person wearing the exoskeleton. Uh, so the, yeah, you can see the exoskeleton from the back. So the robot is uh, shadowing the movements of the person uh, and it's interacting with uh, the other visitors uh, by passing uh, some uh, bricks. Uh, so in this particular demo, uh, the robot is uh, acting as a, as a slave and the person is a master. Uh, but uh, from uh, yeah, previous times we had uh, demos where the robot is actually fully autonomous. And you can see on the screen behind over there one of our, our demos where the robot is autonomously moving around the building and uh, bringing uh, objects uh, to a different floor using the lift. Um, and then if you want we can move on to the next uh, demo over there. So uh, the next robot is a rescue robot, uh, which is uh, intended for casualty extraction in uh, emergencies. So, uh, for example, uh, buildings on fire uh, or uh, gas attacks, terror attacks or, or any other uh, emergency situations where uh, rescue teams have to access and extract casualties. So this robot can uh, help the firefighters or emergency response teams to extract the casualties from the ground and transport them to a safe place. And so is this, is this used um, by public services or out and about at the moment or is it still in development? This is still a research prototype. We've been working on this for nearly two years and it's our second prototype of the robot. We are working with NHS uh, emergency response teams to try to optimize the design of the robot so that it can be uh, maximally bene beneficial for them, for their use. Um, and uh, we hope to, to uh, do some trials soon uh, in more realistic scenarios. And then uh, over here you can see one more uh, demo that we have. Uh, this is a robotic dog. Um, so we are partnering with a company who is building the hardware and we are building the controllers and the high-level software for the robot. Uh, so on the, uh, on the monitor there you can see a video of the robot in simulation. Um, uh, locomoting around, so uh, using different gates, um, uh, so walking, uh, trotting, uh, even running, we can do um, uh, things in simulation. And do you think it will have a head at all, or does it not need one? So we have uh, many sensors that we can attach to the robot, and they essentially uh, they become the head. Okay. So in this uh, compartment in the front of the robot, we have an uh, area where we can put a depth camera, so to perceive the, the 3D shape of the environment. Um, and then uh, we can have, uh, you know, a uh, wireless link so that a person can give some high-level commands to the robot, for example, uh, go, uh, go through this door or climb up these stairs. Um, and then the one that we missed at the beginning was the air hockey demo. Shall we go back there? One more to see. Okay, tell us about this one. Um, so here we have uh, our robotic arm, Panda, playing against the people on uh, air hockey. So the robot is using a camera that is positioned above the table to uh, monitor and predict the motion of the, ho of the um, air hockey puck. 
Uh, so the robot is trying to anticipate the movements of the opponent and trying to uh, intercept the ball uh, or the puck. And is the, so is the robot, uh, the more it plays, is this one of the robots that is going to get better and better the more people it plays? Uh, that is correct. Um, so one of the issues with this robot is that it's not that fast. Okay. <laughs> so to compensate for that, it needs to be smarter. Okay. So predicting the opponent, predicting the future position and velocity of the pack are super important, which is great because that's what our strength is, you know, trying to use machine learning to improve this uh, part of the robot. Yeah. And um, finally, do you have a favorite robot? Ah, all of them are my favorite robots, yes. <laughs> Very diplomatic answer, I'm sure they'd be pleased to hear, no. <laughs> of course. Well, thank you so much um, for touring us again and have a good afternoon tomorrow. Right, we will go on to our final exhibit of the day. And for that, we're going to take you back out onto Exhibition Road.